the attention of a dream fish, depending of course on the force of the fantasy. So there is a shallow where one's tears, if altogether pitiful, may, have, may alert another sort of animal. And thus it was that while he wept, a lady walked out from the waves and went to him. For it had been some time since last sat a stranded weeper here, and the lady had no patience to establish his acquaintance. Anne picked him up and rocked him in her arms, despite his weight, for his tears were not feeding her stomach exactly, but her propensity for power. And Tiger Lad was not surprised, for he was more used to being rescued than not. <laughs> which may, incidentally, account for why he started crying in the first place, and which he might have realized had the lady asked him to explain himself, which she did not, for why question what's making you more mighty by the minute? That's my motto, she thought, and would have told to Tiger Lad had he asked her, which he did not, because his body, though held, was still shuddering with sobs. And since it is so hard to stop the sobs once they have come in full, as they are apt to come, Tiger Lad spent several minutes rocking in the woman's arms, long enough for something else to lengthen and betray him. And suddenly more embarrassed than blue, Tiger Lad found himself dry-eyed and terrified, looking up into a face with the weight of an ocean. Tiger Lad opened his mouth to speak, but speech took a moment to yield. I was searching for the Hall of Mothers. Is it real? But the lady seemed not to hear. She only shushed him and pinched his ear. Quiet, boy, she told him with the gravity of infinity. I didn't ask for you, but now you've come here and you're mine. Open your mouth. Tiger Lad complied. This is where it fits in with the dream story. Tiger Lad complied slowly, relishing his inability to do otherwise, and he shuddered as the lady spit into his mouth a mixture of saliva, salt water, and his own processed tears. And then in one swift move, she took him with her straight into the sea. And that was the last that anyone saw of Tiger Lad for many years. But here's what happened. <laughs> Tiger Lad had entered into the Hall of Mothers beneath the ocean's floor, and his sadness at knowing his own desires had led him to a place where he was trapped and isolated from everyone he'd come to love and know caused him to cry quite a bit, which made his captors all the more powerful. And it was almost worth it when she'd tie him up with seaweed rope and cut him with an edge of coral and wait until he was totally immobilized by fear and pain and longing to pull out her cock and fuck him, all the while telling him that she was trapped here too and that she never planned to have a son, but he had come and he was hers and would he ever stop acting like a victim? that last line pronounced with slaps and not until she had shaking uncontrollably on top of him shot his own tears deep into him would she kissing him stroke his head and tell him what a good boy he'd been and that she did love him in her own way she supposed <laughs> then it was indeed almost worth it but almost is the thing <laughs> <laughs>